Okay. Here we go. So, listener, Michael and I actually recorded a podcast episode Monday. Um, right? That was Monday? This was Monday. Week, this yeah. week is it was Monday. It, it was, was Monday. Monday. Yeah. Okay. Michael and I recorded a podcast episode Monday night with plans to release it on Wednesday. Tuesday, PRX reached out to Jake and said, hey, we're going to make a public statement. Would you please hold off on posting that episode until we've had a chance to make our statement? So Jake reached out to Mike and I via chat and was like, what do you guys think? And we were both like, sure. Like if they're, it's, we, I got the vibe that maybe they were like, kind of changing their tune and wanting to work together or do something to work this out. So yeah, uh, I was like, yeah, sure. Like, let's, let's wait and hear what they have to say. And, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, uh, I didn't, we didn't say anything on the podcast that would have made any, I don't want to want to phrase this. I think that we didn't say anything on the podcast that where we were attacking or being like, super critical of PRX. Right. So it was really more of a reaction to the situation. I was asking you questions more around like, what do you think your ideal outcome would be here? You know, yeah. why is this a little bit different? Um, it was a lot more of like me interviewing you because you're directly involved. I want to quickly circle back to what you just mentioned, uh, just in the spirit of trying to approach this, of having all of the facts correct. Right. I don't think that PRX asked Jake to delay the podcast. It was it was kind of inferred. They they let Jake know, hey, we understand that there's a podcast coming uh, tomorrow. We are preparing a statement. You know, we've collaborated in the past. We love the home gym community. Uh, and it was, it was very much inferred that they were asking us to postpone the podcast, or at least they wanted us to know that they were releasing a statement. So yeah. we, we, you know, I think, um, gracefully, if I may, uh, delayed the podcast because of what you just said, our expectation or our, our hope was that they were going to release a statement that was much different from the one that they actually did release. So yeah, right. sorry, yeah. sorry to, I didn't mean to step on your toes there. No, but I just no, want to no, make sure good. that we get our facts right. I do I I do appreciate the clarification. And yeah. at this point, with like I feel like a lot of the words are being picked apart for accuracy. So yes. any bit of the story that is just a little bit inaccurate lends some credence to like this being this being clickbaity. And, mm -hmm. you know, that we're only saying stuff for views and likes and whatever. And, like, that's not the case. Um, so in the spirit of, yeah, being accurate, I, I do appreciate you jumping in. Um, so we agreed to delay the podcast uh, from dropping. We weren't sure when they were going to make their announcement. Um, right. It was sometime Wednesday, I think, that we found out it wasn't going to be until Friday. Uh, that it they could, said it Thursday, could post Caesar Thursday or Friday. Latest Friday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then you and I were like, man, like by then this information will be almost a week old and, you know, it'll be outdated. We were recording before um, they reached out or anything. So I thought since like Jake agreed to do that and, you know, didn't want to go back on his word to them. Right. Um, so Wednesday night, I said, some time after work I'm like i'm just gonna knock out a quick youtube video and basically go over the things that you and i went over um in sort of like a just a concise way and so i knocked that out and released that yesterday morning again in the intro just like super stoked i'm glad that prx um is going to finally say something optimistic giving them the benefit of the doubt like I really hope they, they say something where, you know, they've agreed to work together in a situation that's yeah. beneficial to everyone. Um, and then I was sitting at work and I got your text. PRX released their response video. And I could tell by the tone of that text, it wasn't like, yeah, man, way to go. Congratulations. A good video yeah. just dropped. You were just like, they just released their response video. And I'm like, oh, shit. I pulled up my phone and it's like, damn, PRX. It's disappointing. Um, oh, wildly. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So that's all. 
I'll say in terms of like getting us caught up, that was the, uh, the chain of events as I said, yeah. anything, do you need to fact check me on any of that? Anything? No, 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 no. I think so. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, for, for the listeners, I think we've gotten, uh, or received a handful of, uh, comments and messages saying you should have just released the podcast, you know, after, after having seen the, right. the, the, the response from PRX. And I will say that, you know, like we already mentioned, what we recorded was a lot of us just talking about the current state of affairs on Monday, right? Which it's Friday morning and that's four days ago. So a lot has transpired. So we decided to jump back on this morning and kind of re-record a response, our thoughts on what's happened because everything that we talked about on Monday is kind of old news at this point and potentially right. invalidated. So what we'll be doing is kind of record re rediscussing the PRX segment that we 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 recorded on previous on Monday, and then at the end of our our not the end but like the second half of our Monday recording, we kind of moved away from the PRX stuff and started talking more life and home gym stuff. So we'll be kind of pairing the end of what we recorded on Monday with what we're talking about today for the right. podcast that you're listening to right now. Right. So people watching from home will be wearing different outfits yeah. at the end of this episode. I thought about wearing the same shirt, you know. For... <laughs> I didn't want to have to dig it out of the laundry <laughs> bin and, you know, do all that. But uh, yeah. yeah, so so that's it. So we're caught up. Um, I will chime in and I'm sure most a lot of people watching this probably watched my video yesterday, but just want to reiterate that one of the things that Mike and I talked about on Monday is, you know, patents and acquiring patents. And yeah. if they were to acquire this patent, they could they could potentially uh, block infringers from uh, selling their product. And I was speculating, pure speculation, not patent attorney, but I was speculating that that would give them the power to stop. Vendetta from selling his adapters and stop Jimpin from selling our adapters. Uh, a lot of people reached out when we posted that clip on social media, and a lot of people said it wouldn't work like that because of prior, because it's been shown to be a thing well before this patent um, application was ever submitted. So I was wrong about that, and I'm happy to admit it because that would be really screwed up if that was possible. So yeah. I wasn't intending to like fear monger or anything. Um, in my limited knowledge of patents, that is like, yeah, that's that's what I gleaned from the information, but I'm happy to report that that was inaccurate. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot, you know, from from comments and from DMs about from from from, you know, great people within the community who know apparently significantly more about oh. patents and how they yeah. roll than we do. So it's been a. Uh, it's been educational. It's yeah. been educational. So for sure. Um, so yeah. So so let's kind of pick up where 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 we're at today, which is that yesterday, uh, as you just mentioned, PRX released their their statement, um, mm -hmm. and I text you and let you know. And so so what PRX did was they released a reel on Instagram, which was I don't know how long it was, but it was essentially like a snippet of a longer about three to four minute long youtube video yeah and holy cow uh the the home gym community man they i you know i mentioned this in our previously recorded version but they they came to arms um yeah. and and some some really really big players within the space have all shared their sentiments and we'll, right. we'll cover all of that. But so I want to ask you, though, so because, you know, I text you saying, hey, the response is up. You're at mm -hmm. work, right? right. And yeah. so like what, to, you know, walk me through, like, what did, what was that like? You know, Man. Like, are you having to like go disappear and pretend like you're going to the restroom so that you no, can like watch the video? So, so I was in a workroom. I, I work in IT. And yeah. so I'm, I'm on a team of three and we do break fixes on computers. And so I had just like taken a computer apart. And then I looked at my phone and was like, boom, put it back on the table. And I was like, I need to see that video. My coworkers <laughs> are in the room and I steal away 30 seconds or whatever to watch the reel. And then I put my phone back down and try to get back to work like everything is normal. But my mind is racing. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. You know, like their response 
was a little bit infuriating. At least that yeah. clip was just, you know, said I was being clickbaity and I was putting out false information. I was just like, oh, no. So it was one of those situations where I was like, you know, going through a lot in my head, but just like playing it cool, like, oh, I'm just assembling computers. Everything's fine. But my mind was racing. I didn't actually get to watch the full video until I got home from work. Oh, okay. um, and that looked like that was better or worse, but it it gave a little more context to, to the things that they were saying in the teaser reel. Um, but the gist of it, of the video, and for those of you who haven't watched it, do yourself a favor and go watch the Instagram reel and go watch the full YouTube video and like decide for yourselves what you think about their reaction. Yeah. Um, We'll link them. We'll put, I'll make sure we yeah. put them in the description. Yeah. Yeah. But the vibe that I got and the vibe that a lot of people got is that a, it felt insincere because they were just reading off of their laptops. B, it felt very legal. Like this wasn't written by them from their hearts in a sincere oh, way that they, you know, again yeah, to its fullest. Yeah. We care about the community. So we're going to post a response from our attorneys that just, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. Um, and then somebody pointed out uh, in the YouTube comments, they were like, link twice if you're okay. This looks like a hostage video. <laughs> it was like, dude, that is so funny. The they look like scared and sad and like, yes. I have no ill will towards those guys, but man, yeah, they, their video presentation and that specific video was rough. Oh, it was, it was really bad. I mean, it was... It was it was surprisingly bad, right? Yeah. Like this is they for, for you know for for one, so they doubled down, like kind of incendiary, yeah. like instead right. of instead of trying to you know build a bridge and and kind of uh, really navigate collaboratively through right. the end of this, they doubled down on we've done nothing wrong. You you know uh, Kyle Jimpin Vendetta. You guys are wrong. We're right. We took right. the, you know, we're we're gonna keep doing what we're doing, and that is not, you know, was it the whole thing? Just watching it, it, it was just a terribly produced video, I, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I thought, wow, this is. They talk about like we're a team of sixty people, six zero, uh, passionate. We love home gyms, this, that, and the other, and just the the whole thing was just terribly done from. Yeah, the constant reading off of their laptops to the, they even said some things incorrectly. They 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 got their facts wrong about like what was said and who said it and and things right. like that. And the whole thing, like you, it just lacked any heart, right? Yeah. Any anything. It, it was it was it was completely not what we anticipated was going to come. Not even remotely close. Um, and. It, I mean, the comments started flooding in like right. um, immediately on both yeah. the YouTube video and on the Instagram reel. And I mean, I just sat back and watched it all happen. And gosh, we'll have to get into what we're thinking. I don't know if they were burner accounts, but so let's let's circle back to last after you released your video on when did you release your video? The original. Saturday morning, last Saturday. So it's been so, almost a week now. Okay. So in the wake of that, a similar a similar thing happened where the community, not so much to the degree that they did yesterday, but on Saturday after you released your video, the community started jumping into their comments and mm -hmm. expressing their infuriation and you know making fun and teasing them about the anything that they had released Halo Arms related on their Instagram page. People were just jumping into the comments and yeah. getting after them. And PRX was deleting those comments. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they learned because people then started calling them out for right. deleting their comments. Yeah. This time around on the video they released yesterday, they must have had a, a conversation like, hey, bad look, let's not delete the comments. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, again, this is, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm guessing, it's what it looks like happened. They yeah. either A, uh, created some burner accounts to kind of go to war with the commenters, um, or they 
they kind of reached out to people that they are friendly with within the community yeah. to go to war in right. the comments. And these were like accounts with, you know, private accounts, 10 right. ish followers, you know, that you could see they were followed by PRX. Yeah. And then that became its own, you know, kind of a uh, side quest, right. watching, watching people go back and forth. And what was, I think for me, Brandon Campbell Diamond was one of the first people mm -hmm. to comment on their Instagram reel. Um, hey, and hey, hold that thought. Sorry, listener. This is, uh, I am in my studio here is in a loft in my house and it gets no air conditioning. Um, and it's been really hot these last two days. So I have an in window air conditioner. I got to turn it off. So sorry about the noise. Continue. Yeah. Brandon was one of the first to post a public response. Yeah. In the comments of the PRX reel. And one of those burner or friendlies to PRX went at Brandon and, you know, like in, in there, in very cringy, like, you know, radical ways. I don't, I don't have it in front of me to, but they, they kind of like went right back at Brandon. And my thought was like, do you know who you're talking to? Seriously. Like, like respect your elders, son. Yeah. Like, who yeah. are you? Uh, but it was, it was highly entertaining. And I, 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 man, I can only hope that this is a, a learning for PRX. Like we are, small but we are mighty as yeah. a community and prx is just a big i don't know how big they are but they're just you know they're they they had the perception of being a big corporate entity mm -hmm. you know last week when you posted this and they started deleting the comments and stuff and then even when they said they needed like three days to prepare their response i thought okay well, that means that they're passing their their the the whole thoughts through legal they have to you know whip up their their content crew it's going to be okay it's going to be well public uh, well produced it's going to be good yeah, and they're going right. to bring it they need that much time and then what they delivered was such hot garbage in my opinion <laughs> yeah and and everybody let them know um yeah. anyway i've so, been talking a lot yeah what do you so what what about you so what it what you know as you're I'm watching watching. this happen I would like to nitpick one of the things that Garrett said. He said that he he said they only had one call with me, which is untrue. Garrett was on one call, but I had two calls prior to the call with Garrett with Alex, who I don't know if he's still with PRX, but at the time he was their lead product designer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Alex and I had a good conversation or we had been having conversations for at least a year and a half. Like um and he is a good dude, was a good dude. I don't know if he's still at PRX. My impression of Alex is that he was a good dude and he would just reach out randomly. Like when I made the trap jack, he reached out randomly and was like, dude, that's such a cool idea. Way to go. Like we, we had good rapport for a long time. Um, they also said that I'm the one that reached out to them to like produce the adapters. And I don't think that's how it happened. I could go through and you know find the documentation but um i don't even know like i don't want to come out here and say they reached out to me i didn't reach out to them what i think is that alex and i had a, a conversation going on for years um at least since i made the wooden version of the jammer arms is when we started chatting so to say that like I reached out, they already had a patent submitted. We had one conversation and we decided to not work together is not accurate of what actually happened. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you called that out. Cause I was going to surface that. Um, but it seems like, I mean, when, when you and I were texting back and forth, you said, you know, I didn't reach out to them. They reached out to me, but it sounds, you know, your what you just stated sounds a, a slightly different, you know, like if you have an ongoing conversation, we know how the DMs can get, it goes back yeah. and forth. You're talking to each other there. He's jumping into your DMs based off of posts that you have ongoing for throughout the, throughout the right. years. And you yeah. know, where did, where did the official conversation about your adapters kind of get in, uh, intertwined in there? Yeah. But um, yeah, so Honestly, it wasn't exactly as they see it. Stated. doesn't, it doesn't even matter. Like that doesn't take away from the larger point that like, sure, you know, everything else and it's all been covered, but I feel like that, if they're calling me out for inaccuracies, like I'll 
take accountability for it. I'm sorry. I, you know, I was speculating on the patent thing and that was wrong. I'm all good to admit that I'm wrong. Um, and for them to misrepresent things that occurred between the two of us, I just, I just want to set the record straight. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you did. Um, and, 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 and what I had already said, like, it's, a, it's been, uh, it's been educational for us too. like, mm -hmm. I, I approach this podcast personally, at least as like, my own opinion, where I'm at, and, and, and I've never been involved in something that hit so close to home, you know, you being a personal friend of mine. Um, and because this is directly tied to you, I find myself getting very emotionally charged in response to these things. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really been, um, a lesson for me in like cooling off, you know, letting the community help and let them do what they're good at. Right. Because mm -hmm. I have a, you know, kind of public persona out there now and I don't want to, I don't know, just like be you know, be known as the guy who's you know throwing stones or or you know being mean in the comments or anything right. so um it's really forced me to kind of have to sit on thing go to you know they say you know sleep on a on an angry email before you right. send it it's kind yeah. of the same thing sleep on a angry comment before you send it mm -hmm. um, but so so yeah so i think what's also been really really cool is to see how this has touched different uh individuals within the community and the people who have decided to kind of not just get into the comments but create their own bits of content or their own reels yeah. um expressing their thoughts on it i know yeah. chris at mutant metals released one yeah. last night that was really good and really heartfelt i think it's super relevant because Chris and Mutant Metals was oh, in this sure. exact same scenario, what, right. maybe a year ago, maybe even less. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where Rogue released a version of the what looked like <laughs> a largely inspired by, if not exact, copy of his uh, dip station or UDA, right? Yeah, ultimate yeah. dip at attachment. Mm -hmm. And from that, you know, if, if for those that don't know, uh, Chris jumped on a couple of podcasts, posted a couple of reels. And at the end of the day, what we what we come to find out is he has a private conversation with Bill Henniger at Rogue Fitness, and yeah. they worked something out. And, mm -hmm. and, and from what I understand is it has been a wildly positive outcome for Chris at Mutant Metals. And because, for and, Rogue, for like stepping yeah, up and doing the right thing. Totally. Exactly. The perception of Rogue when we first learned about this was exactly the same as what we're seeing right now with yeah. you, Vendetta, Jim Pin, you know, and PRX, where the community was making their their feelings known and that they were not happy with Rogue. And Rogue now is 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 looked upon as being the good guy. They 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 did right. what they should have done. And mm -hmm. as we've already talked about, like I think that that was the hope that PRX would would kind of follow suit. Yeah. And they went a completely different route. Mm -hmm. And it's I I think it's going to impact their business to some degree. I think what what is I think that you know PRX is wildly successful, right? I've seen those racks all over the place. But there's there's like a I don't mean this in a derogatory way and in, in in any way shape or form. But there's like a casual home gym owner and then there's like the home gym hobbyist, which is more where you and I sit, right? We, right. Are, yeah. we are a community of people who are not satisfied having a rack, a set of plates, and a barbell or two. We have invested tens of thousands of dollars into our space. And mm -hmm. then we, we do it again. We change stuff out. We upgrade stuff. Like, we are in this for the long haul. and that community that we sit in is wildly different than that casual home gym owner, right? Yeah. And PRX had an opportunity to really tap into that home gym hobbyist. And if I'm being honest, I don't see PRX being super relevant or was ever relevant in that home gym hobbyist space. Right. The products yeah. that they bring to market don't really attract the home gym hobbyist. However, 
had they decided to collaborate with somebody like you or Vendetta who are well regarded in that home gym hobbyist space, they could have really cracked the door open to potentially getting the eyes and the interest of yeah. the that that community, that cohort right. of home yeah. gym buyers, right? Yeah. I mean, what are you and ultimately, about? yeah, ultimately it it's a financial decision how to proceed for PRX. Sure. And the cost of working together is not worth the reward of, you know, mending that relationship with the community. And I really liked Coop's comments on it yesterday because he basically, he gave his two cents on the video itself and the reaction. And then the next story was, but that's their decision to make. They're not doing anything illegal. This is a this is a business decision, and if that's the route that they want to go, that's the route they want to go. Sure. And then that's it. And then you know they they either deal with the fallout or they don't deal with the fallout. There is no fallout or there is a fallout. Like whatever happens after that happens. But that's that's the choice. That's a gamble that they made. And you know there there isn't really much that I can do or you can do or anybody else can do. At this point, after making the case, you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I think I think I kind of lost my train of thought there. But, I mean, that's it. Like, there's no going back. I mean, there could still be a path forward, right? Like, I think that PRX still has an opportunity to try to, maybe not right the ship, but to at least um temper the response that they're currently mm -hmm. getting like i have i have i have big time uh sympathy for whoever man manages their social media and is is has to kind of figure out how do we even how do we stop this how do we i mean cuz it's going to it's going to continue going on for at least a yeah. couple of weeks pretty much anything yeah. that they post on social is going to is likely going to be riddled with people calling them out again or mm -hmm. you know calling them back to where we're at right now and on the subject of where we're at right now. Um, I don't know. Should we talk about some, I don't know. What can we talk about? Like some of our favorite comments that we've read or seen. Um, I thought that Rory Ellis, right. Rorman strength. I really yeah. liked his take on it. Like, or, yeah. like he, he put a, a really funny positive spin on it by saying like, let's turn this into a drinking game for every yeah. time the, they look down at their laptops to read the script, have a drink. Uh, yeah, and I thought yeah. that that was hilarious. Right. Uh, he he then he came back and said, "Actually, wait. I just watched <laughs> how many times that they did it. They looked down at their laptops like twenty plus times. Yeah, you're gonna get drunk. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, right. don't don't. It's it's Thursday afternoon. Like, don't, yeah. don't be doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, we could do that, or we can talk about where do you think you go from here. Like, what you know, what what are you feeling? I know that Coop recommended or said that maybe a best next step would be to look to collaborate with a different company mm -hmm. and 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 approach it from that angle yeah um you know how are you and feeling about next steps so i i like that idea um coop had teased in that um that story like i have a, a couple ideas of companies that i think they should work with um but he left it at that so in the dms i asked him like who are you thinking about and the the couple of names that he mentioned were companies that have reached out since all of this started going on. So we're definitely on the same wavelength. Um, I would really like to see it. I haven't talked to any of the parties about it yet, but I would really like to see if there's a way to um, get Jim Pin and Vendetta and a U.S. manufacturer with like big manufacturing capabilities, uh, U.S. distribution, and just sort of like solve all the problems that we're currently having right now. Like Vendetta can't keep up with orders that are coming in because it's just a one-man show. Um, Jim Pin is producing this stuff in the U.K. and it's expensive to ship it over. Um, so if we could bring in a third company that can handle the manufacturing and handle the scale of manufacturing and do it, you know, distribute in the U.S., I think that would be a killer combination. And we got it on video that PRX says they're not going to 
come after us for continuing to sell their products. Uh, I'm sorry. They're not going to come after us for continuing to sell our products. Right. So like the internet never it, forgets. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So we are well within our rights to team up and make like a super special. And I think that there are some key elements like the price point has to be, it can't be crazy expensive. Um, and they, they've got to be on stock that, God damn, I can't talk this morning. Okay. It's early. Me, it's yeah. early. We're normally doing this much later in the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they have to be in stock and available when people want to buy them. Okay. And the, the price point can't be super ridiculous. So like if we could just knock those two things out and then distribution, like have U.S. distribution so people can get them quickly. If we can we can all work together and get those three elements, I think that it'll crush. It'll do really well with all the, the engineering capabilities that we all have together. Yeah, it would be amazing. So um, that's that's next steps. Um, yeah. But another next step. So you and I talked about this in the Monday podcast, and then I mentioned it in the YouTube video I did, but like banding together the talents that we have in the community and creating some sort of like safe place to incubate ideas where they're not going to get ripped off. We can somehow get patent protection. Um, I've had people reach out to me since posting my YouTube video. Like there are multiple people that are interested there. Uh, there are people interested in helping. Um, I, don't have the time or energy to organize it all myself. So like I welcome anybody who wants to help, anybody who likes the idea, but I've had several people reach out either through DMs or in comments just saying like, let's do this. Let's let's give us a place where we can share ideas. Um, Eccles actually reached out and said, it's called a brain trust. And then he showed me like, uh, you know, the definition of a brain trust. And his idea was like, you know, we. It's a small group of people who are invested in this. We do membership fees. The membership fees cover the patenting. Oh. Um, everybody signs NDAs. So there's no stealing of ideas. And then we collectively share when an idea gets uh, licensed. Sure. It goes into the pool and we collectively share that. So we're we're all invested into not only helping each other and protecting our own ideas, but it solves a lot of the problems that as individuals, we're not able to solve on our own. Right. So that I'm sure it'll, it'll grow and blossom from there, but like those are the seedlings. And I love that idea. I love that idea too, because I know that there are a ton of people in the space who have great ideas when you spend as much time as, as we do in our gyms. And, and I think when you're, when you're trying to solve a problem, right, which typically our problem is, I think mostly revol revolves around, if it's not space, right, where we ha it has to be compact, it has to be easily storable, it has to be able to attach to your rack, right, where you don't have like a barn that you can mm -hmm. just like buy a whole piece, a whole, you know, a machine to kind right. of solve your problem. It really forces us to get creative and to think of ways to solve things. Or there's movements that we're trying to replicate or specific exercise and nobody's really come out with a way to do that well in the home gym space. So I love that idea. Um, I think that there's a lot of talent that continues to kind of um, pop its head out, you know, as, as we go on and, and to be able to have a space where we can do that, where you've got maybe even members of that, 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 that cohort are fam familiar with patenting or maybe right. have some legal background. Yeah. Um, and it would be super helpful and allow us to bring some of these ideas to market and then benefit the home gym community as a right. whole. Right. Um, so I love that idea. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast and, and you want to contribute or participate, you know, let us know. Yeah. Reach um, out. We'll start like a list and start, you know, going through figuring out the things that we need to do and the people who are interested. And, right. You know, if it's something that we can do, I think we should do it. So to circle back to, Kind of what brought up that in in the initial podcast, the conversation was um, 
whether it was PRX's intention of preventing patenting an idea that they didn't, again, I want to be careful, uh, even if it wasn't their intention to um, bring together ideas that they didn't necessarily come up with, but then their original idea is to put it all into one and patent it, um, they say that they're not going to go after anybody and stop anybody else from selling it. But just, just verbally saying that doesn't squash the fears of small inventors of that happening, whether it's PRX right. or somebody else. Like, I've had a lot of people reach out to me with ideas saying, hey, I like what you've done. Help me do the same. And um, as, you know, situations have shown, there's nothing that's really safe about the approach that I took of, like, putting an idea on the Internet right. and then hoping it a company wants to work with me. I think what gives me a, a little bit of protection is the fact that the, compu the community knows about me and my account. And so there is accountability for companies that want to borrow an idea. But smaller creators with smaller following, they, they don't necessarily have that protection. So a lot of people have great ideas, but they're like, I'm not going to put this idea out there. I'm not going to share this idea because I don't mm -hmm. want it to get ripped off. And so I feel like we're missing out on a wealth of potentially revolutionary ideas from people that just don't have the means to get those ideas on the on the drawing table, get those ideas right. out into the world, get those ideas manufactured. So this would be hopefully a solution to help with that. Completely agree. I'm curious in some, it's like, the, I think the next logical question, at least for me, is if if they have no intention of pursuing legal action or or prohibiting other companies from producing something similar, then why patent it? Like, why would you do that? Um, I think one of the more interesting things that I saw in the comments uh, that this whole thing has like kind of shined a light on was somebody was calling out that uh, maybe there's some other things that PRX has brought to market that is infringing on other existing patents. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna just like leave that there. But yeah, it's 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 really interesting to me to see how the decisions that they've made is potentially now going to shine a uh, undesired spotlight. Sure. On the Right. So it's, yeah. Let's, you know, time will tell. Time will yeah. tell how this all plays out, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, you know, we've been going for about 40 minutes on this, um, and we still want to kind of tie in the second half of our conversation from Monday, which is right. uh, not this whole PRX situation. It's not related yeah. to that. Um, but, we wanted to, as we already mentioned, just kind of come in and talk about the current state of affairs as they exist right now on Friday, June 14th. Um, and we'll continue to keep this conversation going. I think that there's going to be additional things that continue to happen um, over the next weeks and months. And I think that it will continue to sprinkle into our ongoing podcast and we'll talk about them. I know that we've we've had a couple of people who are a little bit more familiar with the patenting process and have done this before who have reached out and said, hey, uh, I'd love to be on your podcast. I can actually talk a little bit more in depth about this if you want to talk about that. Yeah. And I think we will. I think that we'll bring in some guests. We'll like kind of use this as a jumping off point to educate, to share more insights into what this can look like. And if you're a creator out there who wants to try and do this, how you might be able to do that. Um, yeah, but I think at this point, we're going to wrap up mm -hmm. the PRX session uh, or section or segment of yep. this podcast. And now we're just going to jump you into where we left off on yep. Monday's episode that didn't get released, but is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Mike, that's enough about me, man. What about you? <laughs> what about me? <laughs> I saw, I've been seeing on the Instagrams that you got a nice little piece of equipment in your gym. What is it you got there, buddy? I did. I did. I joined Team Rhino. Ooh. Um, uh, yep. I found a, a rogue rhino on Marketplace, and it was just too good to pass up. 
and I, it's been you know what it's i've wanted a rogue rhino for a long time um and i think honestly i think you know darko got one and he's been sharing it in his stories all the time and, and talking about how much he loves it and coop is a really big fan of his and I had honestly seen Coop's, the, he, he calls it the Coop squat, the way that he's like integrated his rhino into his rack. And then mm. he's got like the ultimate bat wing. It's more like, it's more like the Eagle. Like he's got, you know, <laughs> just like shelves and, and storage for days coming off the sides of his rack. But, um, I talked about this on the last podcast, right? I, I, I re-injured an old, uh, lower back injury and it, and it's something that just keeps coming back you know hmm. i went a solid year with with no issues and and then just like unracking a, a a light squat i think i had like 170 on the bar so like warming up it just tweaked and i'm still not 100 hmm. percent, you know and i just thought you know i just i don't know if i should be barbell back squatting right now you know it just seems like if i want to keep uh training legs at least in the home gym setting I need to be looking at other uh, other pieces of equipment, and I didn't really have the space for like a leg extension or a leg curl, and I knew that the Rhino would integrate really well into my setup, being able to use it for lat pull downs and rows and all of the various like functional trainer setups that I do. So anyway, I've wanted a Rhino for a really long time, and I found one that I was able to grab and it was quite the project to tear apart my rack and drop that thing in. Um, yeah, how long but, did that uh, take you? So probably two full, not two full days, like maybe, I'd say maybe six to, to eight hours um, of like getting the main part done. But as you know, like anytime you make a change like that, there are a bunch of like downstream minor tweaks that you have to make. Uh, and and so that like has that's still going like i you know the last few mornings i'm out there i'm like oh i need to put this over here now and yeah. uh oh man now my now my banners look weird because they were centered around the uprights that aren't there anymore and, yeah. You know, yeah so yeah. there's like a lot of trickle down uh changes but yeah so i got a rhino i'm loving it so far it is um it is a really really great piece of equipment and i'm just glad i was able to score one so yeah that's been fun and yeah i don't know what else to say about that really that's like awesome. the rogue rhino it's a great piece of question equipment. question for yeah. you what belt are you using with the rhino okay so i'm glad you asked this this is a good question actually yeah. so i with with the rhino they included the rogue multi-belt that it comes with right mm -hmm. now i had owned a rogue multi-belt that i bought a la carte a couple years ago just for the various like belt squat setups that I would do with, with like free weights or at one point I'd built like a mm -hmm. version of yours. Right. And so that's why I bought the multi belt. And that was, I just assumed that rogue would have, would make the best belt out there. And I was wrong. Cause that belt was not great. The rogue mm -hmm. multi belt, it would like lift up and it was really stiff, had really good padding, but it was stiff. So I sold mine actually five ish months ago because I bought the spud ink pillow belt. Ah. because people had widely said that the the henny belt like the 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 squat max belt basically mm -hmm. that that brian hennessy would include with the squat max was the best belt for a while until spud inc released their pillow belt which they actually collaborated with brian hennessy on like he was really i guess you know really cool about helping them to develop the pillow belt so nice. i bought that and that is like a night and day difference like that's a really good belt squat belt and then because I bought the Mammoth, uh, uh, I got the Fringe belt squat belt now too. Yeah. And I got to say, of the three, the Spud Ink pillow belt is is easily the best sure. of the three, like yeah. hands down. Yeah, no, nice. no questions about it. I haven't tried that one. I have one of the older Spud Ink belts. Sure. And I found that really uncomfortable under heavy weights. Um, Especially with a cable belt squat. I don't know why specifically for me. I feel like it's more painful with a cable belt squat. Maybe it's because nice. it's, it's going directly down. But yeah, dug into my thighs. Um, so for that one, I have the Abmat belt squat cover, which oh, is basically right. 
like a nice foam marshmallow that goes around any belt squat belt. And uh, now that one is super comfortable, but I also have a Henny belt and I have the fringe sport belt as well. I got a belt with, uh, with the ATX belt squat and oh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's kind of like the spud ink belt, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love you, ATX. I love your equipment, but that belt sucks, bro. The belt is no bueno. So what's yeah. your go-to? What's the what's the one that you uh, um, pick, like that you grab off the shelf? I, I do the spud with the Abmat belt squat cover more often than not. Really? Okay, yeah. even more than yeah. the, the Henny belt. Yeah. So I like the Henny belt. Um but why do I, I, so I think I like the, the spud one better because the Henny is more of a one size fits all and the spud yes. belt, the spud belt, I got a medium. And so it's only got one set of rings, but it's like the right size for my waist every time. Um, so, and there's nothing like hanging off. It's yeah. like a minor nitpick, but when you're, when you have three great products to choose from, you you're going to pick the best of the great ones. It doesn't For make sure. the Henny belt any less effective or the, the fringe belt less effective. Yeah. But I just like the convenience of those rings being exactly where I need them to be in the center. And then the extra cushion from the ab mat belt squat cover. Yeah. It's just like, it's perfect combo for me. I agree. I think that, so this is with all three belts that I have right now, the, the fringe belt, the rogue multi belt and the spudding pillow belt, they are spudding does offer sizes, but it's basically like a women's or a men's. So I, you know, I've got mm -hmm. the men's and, um, those, those extra loops are just like dangling there and they're kind of mm -hmm. in the way. And so I can totally see what you mean by just having like that one connection point because you kind of find what your preferred location on it is. Yeah. And then, you know, the rest of them are just flapping in the wind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually. So, cause I mentioned this, like Darko was definitely contributed to the, uh, the FOMO of not having a Rhino, but he is not liking his rogue multi belt. So he went and he bought some, um, seat belt, cut like cushions you know uh -huh. like and and he put those on the whatever like where the where the d-rings are on his yeah. rogue multi-belt because his were digging in or are digging into his thighs and so he says that that's kind of working um right. yeah but yeah belt squats aren't always the most comfortable i mean neither is squatting with 400 pounds on your back but right you know yeah. something pulling down between your thighs is kind of irritating too so i find and this may just be a preference thing but i love belt squatting obviously i know i own many of them yeah. i've built many of them um but i like belt squatting for higher reps lower weight and so um that's typically my strategy so that the belt isn't as painful but yeah i feel like no matter what belt you're using, if you're belt squatting 400 pounds, 500 pounds plus, yeah. like it's just there's no way to squat that comfortably. Oh, yeah. No, or with a bar in your back, maybe the Mars bar because it's like a pillow backpack over your shoulders. But it's better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah. What about you? Any you've? I mean, I know you got all that new stuff from Home Gym Con, but is anything else? Oh, you got the Dane. How's the Dane? Yeah. yeah. How's that? Have you been using the Dane? I have been, yeah. So, um, what I'm finding using, um, what I'm finding myself using the Dane for is just as a functional trainer and storage. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't use it as a rack because I have two other racks. Right. Um, so, I'm using my, I brought home a fringe Osprey rack and I'm using nice. that for squatting. I've got my Mars bar in there, I've got my Darko anchors in there, and my rep monoliths. So, like, that's my squat rack and then my bells of steel hydro rack uh is my benching rack and uh yeah so i'm just using it for the functional trainer right now and like cable stuff but um it's great because i had a functional trainer and a rack now right. i have them all in one and that that gave me the space for the atx lap pull down and so I feel like it's kind of the perfect setup right now. Like I'm, I'm still like you, like I need to move my banners around and stuff and like yeah. reorient, but 
in terms of equipment layout, like the footprint is just fucking sick. Um, yeah. The one thing, so I have probably like four or six uprights just leaning against my wall in a corner. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with those. Um, I don't have my dialed motion system set up anymore because I sold the rep and they were on the rep uprights. Um, and then I have a my leg extension leg curl that is kind of in an awkward spot that I need to figure out where that's going. Yeah. But I sort of have an idea to combine them all into one. So I'll, I'll, nice. there. I'll tease that. And, uh, that is sort of like a, a back burner project when I have a little more time on my hands. Do you have cross members too, or only uprights? I have two by three cross members. So they, they, but three get, by three uprights. I have, I have four, two by three uprights. Okay. And then the cross members from the, it's like, it's a whole two by three rack. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then I have two extra three by three uprights that are like 90 inches, 89 inches. Sweet. So, yeah. It's I just like, like, there's so much potential. Yeah. I, I haven't figured out what I want to do with them yet. I feel like there's always a reason to hold on to those. So oh, yeah. I, when I set up my rack here in Phoenix, um, so I originally had an RM3, which is a rogue 30 inch depth interior. And then when I did the bat wing, I had picked up some like Titan cross members from scratch and dent. And so I was like part rogue, part Titan so mm -hmm. that I could, you know, ha put my wings with my 30 inch. And then I had a 42 inch main rack. Um, but then I wanted to do like those little top wings and the top extensions that I have mm -hmm. and in order to do that. I had to get rogue cross members and yeah rogue the ones that they sent me arrived like real scratched up they got like real banged up in transit mm -hmm. and so they sent me all new ones Ooh. so i i had bought six cross members and then i wound up with 12 basically Dang. so <laughs> yeah Jeez. so i've been holding on to those too like i'm like i don't want to just turn around and sell these like they're more valuable to me for a future build down the road, you know, like, what can I do with these? And then one mm -hmm. of the cro top cross members came in real handy. Cause when I just dropped in the Rhino, I needed an extra top cross member. I was like, ah, got nice. one of those, <laughs> got one of those already. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, what else? Did you see that I picked up some vintage plates? Did you no. see my stories? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So gotta love this about the home gym community, but one of my friends from the discord uh he's actually one of the mods he goes by brick on the discord he got he he's deep down the vintage rabbit hole and only recently too i'd say probably in the last year he's gone down the vintage rabbit hole and he hit me up a couple of weeks ago and was like hey dude there's these uh bfco vintage deep dish plates in phoenix the guy won't ship them to me but he's just selling them in addition to this like ab crunch machine that he's <laughs> listed but i saw like them in the corner of the picture oh, yeah. and he sent me some close-ups and um so bfco stands for bell foundry company they mm -hmm. used to be in los angeles they're not in business anymore but i'm familiar with them because they're like they're kind of like west coast like legacy iron because mm -hmm. uh, arnold used to lift with these plates there's like pictures of him lifting with the bifco or bfco deep dishes so anyway, my friend was like, hey, if you want them, you should go get them. If you want to ship them to me, great. But if you want to keep them, keep them. Yeah. So I went and picked them up. They've been painted like at least three times. You can see some, they're gold now, but it's all chipped up and you can see like red under there mm -hmm. too. So they've been painted a number of times. So I'm thinking I'm going to take them to a local sandblaster and yeah. sand blast off the color and then have like a pair of... I mean, vintage iron plates. Don't don't uh, don't squander away some uh, some internet virality, man. Like you know what? <laughs> yeah. Weigh you got to weigh them and then strip the paint and then weigh them and then repaint them or leave them. What you just don't let a good video go to waste, man. I got millions of views off that multiple times. Do you it. Know, do you know that that's what I said to my friend Brick? I, I when he when I was debating whether or not to keep them or send them to him, I was like, ah, oh, man, if I kept them, it would probably just be for the content. Kyle's reels have blown up on those things, and he, he responded, he's like. If I see that guy weigh one more plate, I swear. 
Oh man. Yeah, yeah, it's a good times. But that's um, funny, dude. Yeah, those were my two recent pickups. Um, it's been good though. Feel I'm feeling better. My back is not 100, percent but I've been able to lift like really mm. light, like just a couple. I'm just doing like two or three movements a day. See how my back responds. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's been. It's hot here. It's like 110 mm. outside. Yeah. So glad that I'm podcasting from the home office and not still trying to make this happen out in the gym. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. I think that's everything for me. You got anything else? Yeah, I feel like that's a good place to end it. We can wrap it up. Yeah. Um. Well, before we end it, I just yeah. want to say Home Gym Con 2025. It's getting so exciting. And it's getting big. Like... I see that vendor list and it's like, holy shit, we're, we're like ahead of where we were already. Like yeah. the, the vendor list is, is just amazing. And I'm still seeing, like, I'm, I'm going back and watching home gym con content that maybe I didn't, I didn't catch like the first week it came out or whatever. Like I'm, yeah. I'm circling back and just like, God, man, it'll never get old, dude. I'm so pumped and it's a year away and I'm going to be pumped all year, man. Speaking of Home Gym Con 2025, I might have just recruited a couple of cameramen for us oh, last sick. night. So last night I was hanging out with a couple of my neighbors who are super into whiskey. Like they have, <laughs> like one of them has an entire whiskey room, like oh, with shelves of names and rise and all types of different oh, whiskeys. Man. The other one's got the same and they've been kind of coaching me on on whiskey so i've been doing a lot of different whiskey mm -hmm. tasting i'm in a whiskey group in my Sweet. community now oh, anyway, we were we were we were hanging out last night watching the nba finals having some whiskey and i was like hey guys i'll be in louisville kentucky next year in june and they both perked up and were like we're coming like Dude. we want to go like they were serious yeah. they were checking their calendars like we want to go we'll just like go drink whiskey all day while you're at this convention i'm like well maybe you could come to the convention too we could use <laughs> yeah. a couple yeah. of camera guys yeah bro yeah some really good whiskey distillers out there i went to uh i know we're like getting off track but yeah uh, I, I did a tour at bardstown distillery um with my girlfriend a few months ago and it just god it's so good i love yeah. whiskey and like to be able to try it in the different steps of the process like the distillate and then you know before they put it in the barrel and then after age like a year and then five years like they let you taste it all and you can just taste that maturity of the yeah the alcohol soaking in the the oak barrel god it's it's so cool i'm a i'm a huge fan i'm gonna geek out with your friends so hard man i might Dude. skip home gym con to go drink some whiskey <laughs> drink whiskey i just yeah. just bring all the whiskey to home gym con man it'll be a good time I feel like this this is like a good opportunity to pitch Jake an idea that maybe one of the prizes for this year for people who buy home gym con tickets is like a really nice bottle of Ooh. Kentucky bourbon <laughs> or something. Very from the local right there. I thought you were gonna say like an additional vendor, like official oh. official whiskey of home gym con, right? <laughs> yeah. Like like first form and then just be like Passing out shots to everybody all weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, That'd it's funny to see you bring that up because Peter was was pouring Jameson for us at uh, Home Gym Con 2024. Get on the down low, bro. Don't get Peter in trouble, bro. In okay. It was in, it's in the past. Yeah, people no. never get in trouble for things that they did in the past. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway. All right, dude. Well, it was a good chat. And oh, it's uh, good, man. Catch you on the next one. I'll catch you on the next one, my man. <laughs> right. See you, dude. See you.